Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today I'm going to be starting my Frida McFadden taste test vlog and there is already some spicy controversy so you know I gotta talk about it. In this video I'm gonna be taste testing four of Frida McFadden's books. If you don't know about her she really blew up on Kindle Unlimited. She's an indie published thriller author and people love her okay she has a cult following really unlike any that i've ever seen for any thriller author i feel like romance authors have cult following some horror authors do definitely some extreme horror authors do and if you say any negative thing about any of their favorite authors books you will literally get raked over the coals it's literally insane but i've never seen that for a thriller so it's gonna be really interesting for me to read these books in this video I hope and none of her rabid fans come for me but I am excited to get into it I ended up starting out with the housemaid I am about a quarter of the way through so I already have some updates for you guys but if you don't know what this uh, book is about you probably should know before you go into this video I am gonna be getting into spoilers the housemaid is following this scrappy little girl who's been living out of her car she just got out of prison and she's trying to get her life back so in order to do that she starts working for this family who is super rich and she is their live-in nanny she is the housemaid and she's treated really 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 horribly but she's fine she's gonna keep working there because she can't get a job anywhere else she's kind of desperate down on her luck and then things start happening as she notices some creepy stuff going on and the wife just seems really unhinged and she starts an affair with the husband kind of classic domestic thriller plot unfolding here so let me give you my update so right now i'm about a little over a quarter of the way through the book and the book is really interesting it's really engaging it has that juicy kind of num, 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 num. <laughs> Uh, domestic thriller writing where you just like eat it up like at least I do I don't know I just eat up that shit I just nah, give me the drama give me the juice and that is what the story has I love our unhinged mom character our main character is fine she's sympathetic like she's the bitch I'm gonna steal your life of the bitch I'm gonna steal your life plot but I just cannot get a read on the mother character she is so interesting to follow because in some scenes she's like this put together perfect rich lady and then in other scenes she's a train wreck so I can really see what our main character is going through like feeling super uneasy and uncomfortable in this house but here's the deal and this is where a little bit of the controversy is coming in already this book feels like a carbon copy of the last mrs parish now there are some elements that are changed but the overall feeling and overall plot is really really similar to one of my favorite books of all time the last mrs parish and this is the thing with Frida McFadden that people talk about on the internet is that a lot of her books are just carbon copies of traditionally published thrillers just like changed enough so where she won't get in trouble and I think that's a little fucked up but I'm also only like a little over a quarter of the way through so it could just be that it's a similar setup and there's going to be completely different twists and all of that jazz I am going to keep reading and I will let you know what I think. I have my coffee here to wake me up and I did my Tarani s'mores latte so I'm living for it. It is so early in the morning but I have a packed day today so as I get ready and make myself not look like this I'm going to listen to a little bit more of the audio. It is on KU. I believe all Freedom McFadden's books are on KU, but I also wanted to listen along with this one just to check out the quality of her audiobooks because I know she's like kind of a newer author. She's indie published, so I was curious. And so far, I am liking the audio. I'm going to listen to a little bit more while I beautify myself and I'll be back for an update eventually. Okay, y'all, what the hell? What the hell? What? <laughs> What's going on? This is crazy. This is weird. I feel, 
I feel dirty reading this. I actually could not put this book down. It's actually so much later in the day. I have already had a couple meetings and I keep in between trying to get other things done, but I keep going back to this book. I'm about 50% of the way through. I just feel wrong reading this though. Like it just feels icky. It just feels wrong. It feels like I'm cheating on one of my favorite books. I love Liv Constantine so much. They are an author duo and they're just like these, I believe they're sisters. They're like these cute little sisters. I would be so unimaginably pissed if I were them. If I was that duo who just like had this amazing idea, put in so much hard work with my sister to like create this little baby child. Like I know authors think of books as their babies. If I put in all that work in my baby and then somebody ripped it off and was making all this money. No, because I'm pissed. I'm pissed because here's the thing. Here's the, here's the other layer is that this book is good, but is it good because Frida McFadden wrote it or is it good because it's my favorite book ripped off? I don't know. I don't know. I genuinely do not know. All I know is that I'm having a good time, but I'm mad about it. <laughs> It's so weird. It's so weird. Ew. I don't know how to feel about this book. I genuinely do not know how to feel. I gotta get back to my day, but after this next hour meeting, you best believe I'm jumping right back in. Now, because I do have a long day ahead of me, y'all know what I'm gonna use to boost my mood, focus, concentration, productivity, all that good stuff. I cannot have any more caffeine other than my regular cup of coffee in the morning because I start to get jittery, but I do want all those benefits. So you know what I'm about to do? Let's go take my Magic Mind shot. This is my cutie little Magic Mind box. Here we go. Here's the little shot and let me tell you a bit about them while I prepare my little nootropics shot. So here I am making my daily Magic Mind supplement. Basically, Magic Mind is a health shot and it has new tropics inside. This is why it works to boost your memory, boost your focus, all that good stuff. There is something inside called Bacopa Moneri and it boosts your working memory. So this is backed by science and they naturally adapt to what your body needs when you are under stress. It is the perfect little productivity shot that just helps you focus and stops procrastination in its tracks. So most people actually think that coffee helps with procrastination, but it actually raises your cortisol levels, which causes anxiety and stress, which can actually bring a higher urge to procrastinate. And the adaptogens and nootropics in Magic Mind reduce your stress levels. So your productivity does not take a hit. And of course, the best thing about Magic Mind is that they have a 100% money back guarantee. If you don't like it, they will provide for you a 100% refund, no questions asked. There we go. Now I feel super prepared to go about the rest of my packed, packed day. And I don't have any extra caffeine, any jitters, anything like that. I've got energy from matcha and focus from the nootropics and I am so good to go. So if you wanna try out Magic Mind, of course I will have my link down below. Don't forget to use my code and keep yourself focused without overloading your body with caffeine because we do that so much already. Thank you so much to Magic Mind for sponsoring today's vlog and now let's get into an update. Hello, y'all. I'm at the 67% mark and the similarities are just getting too crazy for me at this point for me to think that this is anything other than like a direct ripoff. And it feels really weird that like this ripoff is coming from an author who mostly is on KU and like independently published. And she's like ripping off a thriller that is traditionally published that people would have to like go to the store and buy. I don't know. It just feels like she's like, oh, you don't want to pay money for these expensive ass $30 hardcover books from Barnes and Noble. I'll give you it. All you have to do is have Kindle Unlimited. Like, is that her lane? Is that what she does? I don't know. This is just too weird. Like, there are too many coincidences. Like, if you've read The Last Mrs. Parrish, then you know about the Broadway show scene. And like, that is the pivotal scene in The Last Mrs. Parish. When I tell you in The Housemaid, it was the same exact pivotal 
seen. Like, there are just too many coincidences. I feel like, I don't know how Frida McFadden is not being sued over this. Like, maybe she changed just enough to avoid suspicion, but like, I'm suspicious. No, no. How are people not talking about this? How is the housemaid just like being sold on shelves like two feet away from the last Mrs. Parish? Like, they did it first and they did it better. Like, I'm actually mad, but I'm mad because I'm enjoying it. <laughs> like, I'm still eating it up, but like, would I rather just reread The Last Mrs. Parish? I don't know. Like, this is ridiculous to me personally. This is crazy. Maybe this one's a little bit darker. I'm having trouble remembering all of the specific specifics of The Last Mrs. Parish. And honestly, now I want to go back and read it to see if it is truly better because I really do believe it is. And either way, it was published first. So I think we all know who, uh, who did it first. But maybe this one goes a little tad bit darker. But it's the same book. It's the same book. I'm shook right now, y'all. I am shook. I should be. You know what I should be doing? I should be eating lunch. But you know what I'm not going to do? Eat lunch. I'm going to sit here and probably binge the rest of this book. If y'all hear the sirens, they're coming for me. They're coming for my crazy ass. I'm about to be unhinged if this ending is the... Like, I just... Something has to be changed. It can't... <sighs> I have never been so torn over a book rating in my life. This book, if I had no background, if I knew nothing of the existence of my favorite book, one of my all-time faves, Lost Miss Parish, this would be a five star, no doubt in my mind. But knowing what I know, I literally want to give it a one star. Like I'm so frustrated. I honestly cannot put a rating on this book right now. And I did some digging because I'm like, there's no way that no one's talking about this. And I found a Reddit thread that talks about it. It's the only thing that I can find is a Reddit thread that's like, what's going on? Why are all this woman's books like carbon copies of other thrillers? Uh, and the original poster says, admittedly, I still enjoy the books and will continue reading them. I just wanted to discuss the similarities with other books. And then all these people, there's literally 75 responses that are like, I'm so happy I found this. I was liking the book, but then I got to the second part and I was like, this is so similar to another book. And I was shocked that it's not only similar, but absolutely the same. And here's the thing is that it is the exact same, like all the way through to the end, to the final twist. It's a carbon copy. It's literally a carbon copy. Like it's crazy. And everyone's saying that. And apparently there's another book that's like a carbon copy of Verity. And someone posted about that in a Facebook group and said like, what's going on with this author? Well, Frida was a part of the group. So all the posts disparaging Frida get deleted. Girl, what? Like you've been found out. Like you've been found out. Like stop getting the posts deleted. We all know. And she had a statement. She posted a statement in response to like someone tearing apart her book that allegedly is a carbon copy of Verity, which I totally believe it because this was copy and paste from one of my favorite books and I'm ready to go to war for Liv Constantine. I will go to war. But I wanna read Frida McFadden's statement about her other book. This has nothing to do with Housemaid, but it just rubbed me the wrong way. So I'm gonna read it for you. This is what she said. Based on the reviews I received, I have since read Verity. So we believe that. Colleen Hoover is undoubtedly a very talented writer. I have nothing but respect for her, but I do believe her book is very different from mine aside from the plot points. She's written a romantic suspense, which by nature involves a lot of sex and is not meant to represent true brain injury. Her book is largely about the relationship of a woman and her children. I had heard about her book before publishing and I was a little concerned, but friends told me there are only so many plots out there and everyone makes each idea their own. I can guarantee there are no pieces of dialogue that are the same. That would be impossible. Perhaps Hoover is also a fan of Rebecca, Jane Eyre, and Gone Girl, and we were both inspired by the same things. I would not be so vain as to think she has read my book. Is that like throwing shade at Colleen Hoover saying like, oh, she's so vain to think that I would copy? Ew, like that just rose me the wrong way. There is no way, no way that this amount of similarities could show up. I don't care. I don't care. And like people in the comments of this Reddit thread, some people are defending her saying like, if 
the same plots couldn't be written and like didn't exist and explain like all these haunted house books that have like the same kind of like copy and paste plot like this is not a tropey book where you're walking into like a slasher and you know what's kind of gonna happen this is not a haunted house story this is a thriller which had never had anything written like it before that came out in I believe 2016, 2017, whenever Last Miss Parish came out. And then a few years later, another thriller doing the exact same thing and previously had not been done. That would be like if you've read Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pimbrough and you know about that crazy, 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 crazy twist. Can you imagine another book with that twist coming out now, years later, after Behind Her Eyes has been a thing? Everyone would be like, uh, it's been done. We can't be having this again. We've seen it, seen it. And to me, I feel like the Last Mrs. Parish is not as popular as something like Behind Her Eyes. Like I think a lot of people have read it. It's a bestseller, but it's not lauded the way that these other like super popular thrillers are lauded. It's more of like, if you're not like a thriller reader, you might've picked it up, but chances are you have not. And I think that Allegedly, allegedly, this is my opinion. Do not sue me, Frida. I think that she preyed on that. That this was a really good book that did not get the publicity that it deserved. And she was like, hmm, well, let me try to write it better. And to me, that just gives very arrogant. It gives something that I do not like. Like immediately reading her statement, it put a bad, bad, bad taste in my mouth. And I'm thinking of another situation last year where one of my favorite books that I read last year had a super similar twist to coincidentally another Colleen Hoover book but you read those two books side by side and you see that it went in two drastically different directions even though that the twist was very similar almost like identical two books can exist with the same twist or the same plot points and also be very very different books I don't think anyone was accusing Riley Sager of copying Colleen Hoover however that is not the case with The Housemaid and that is why I really am leaning towards giving it a one star. Here's the thing though, there's a sequel. <laughs> and that is the next book that I'm going to read in this vlog. I'm going to pick up the sequel to The Housemaid because obviously there's no sequel to The Last Mrs. Parish. And we're gonna see what Frida does with it and how we feel about it. Um, maybe this will absolve her in my eyes, but I'm, I'm unsure. Now there is a prequel to the Last Mrs. Parish, which I do own and I have read. Thank you, Jay. I believe, Jay, I believe you were the one who sent me that. I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it just like expanded upon the scrappy little I'm a Celia Life character that we loved in the original book. So if this sequel to The Housemaid is a ripoff of the prequel to The Last Mrs. Parish, in my mind, it will be confirmed. This is a carbon copy. This is malicious. If it's not, okay, Frida, you, you've made yourself a lane. You did something original, but I'm just, I have a bad taste in my mouth about this whole thing. I can't lie. I hate being this negative about a book that I really did truly enjoy my reading experience, but I'm just sick over the fact that so many people are probably reading this, giving it five stars, and they don't even know like the grossness. I feel like I only know about this because I'm an avid thriller reader and it just so happens that the book that was copied is one of my favorites. So I have a weird feeling about this whole thing, but I'm going to go ahead and dive into the sequel. <sighs> I don't know when I will get to you, but I'm sure I will have strong thoughts when I do. <laughs> Hello vloggy vlog. I just got done with work. I had about a million <laughs> walking sessions this evening, back to back to back to back. So I am dead tired. I'm so ready to go home, eat, and start The Housemaid's Secret. But I have some other reading to do before. I don't know if he'll want me to say this on the internet, but McKay, my bestie here on booktube uh subscribe to him a million times over literally make a new gmail account so you can subscribe to him again love him so much he sent me a short story that he wrote and i literally cannot wait to read it so i'm gonna go home and read that literally can't wait um and then we will get into the housemaid secret and i will update you at some point hello vlog it is the next morning i'm so sorry if you can hear the like yard work that's going on outside my window my apartment complex 
have these people come so early in the morning when I usually try to film and update my vlogs in the quiet, in the silence when my neighbors have not woken up yet, <laughs> but the lawn people are here. So hopefully that isn't too annoying. I did want to update you that I got about a quarter of the way through the housemaid's secret yesterday after work. I also read McKay's story and it was phenomenal. In the housemaid's secret, obviously it's the follow up to the housemaid. So we're following Millie the maid's life. I was interested if we were going to follow both Millie and the wife from the last story, but we're just following Millie the housemaid. And she's kind of just moved on to her next family and she's cleaning for them. And it's the same kind of setup where something's going on with the wife. We're not sure what's happening. She's just kind of like a hermit. And then like Millie will find like blood stained clothes and she's concerned about the wife. It's pretty creepy, pretty ominous, but the writing style is annoying me. And I was struggling with pinpointing why, but I think it's just about Millie's character. Something about Millie's character in this book, I don't know. She's just not as sympathetic as the last book. And I'm starting to get really, really annoyed with her. It's almost like she's a caricature of a poor person. And for me, when I read a rich people drama type of thriller, I like to either be like, embroiled in the juicy drama and the opulence of a rich people and just have it be so ridiculous and over the top or I need it to be like an eat the rich story where me and our main character are like on the same level I am joined with them and we are just going throughout the story taking these rich people down and this book doesn't fit nicely in either one of those categories Millie is like the best way I can describe it is the caricature of a poor person like she doesn't feel relatable to me because she doesn't feel like a real person. There are a lot of inconsistencies with her character. Like for example, she was reading the grocery list for the new house that she's working at trying to go pick up these groceries and she's like, pate? Why do I have to go pick up pate? What even is pate? And I'm like, okay, lol, like she's never had pate. She doesn't know what it is. Fine, sure consistent with the character. Then two chapters later, the husband gets home from work and she's like, him in his Armani suit. Girl, what? Me as a middle-class girl, we would get that pate from Ikea. <laughs> so I know what pate is, but I have never seen an Armani suit. I do not know what that looks like. I could not tell you if a man's suit is Armani or not. So how is she clocking this man's Armani suit but she doesn't know what pate is like it's just so weird even there was like a description of when she walked in the house for the first time to clean it and she was like now I don't know anything about architecture but if I did I would be able to tell you that this armoire is a 19th century blah 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 and it's worth more than your life so it's like the author was trying to give us that like rich opulence that we need in a rich people drama thriller but through the eyes of someone who doesn't know what it is and then that was followed up with or i guess that chair from uh i don't know the victorian era or whatever like that's literally how she wrote it and i'm like pick a lane like is millie going to be the lens with which we view this stuff or are you going to give us extra information that she doesn't know the writing and the character development for our main character just feels very, very scattered, which doesn't really make sense because we've already spent time with this character. So to me, it shouldn't feel like that. But that's just how I'm feeling at a quarter of the way in. So I guess I will keep on reading and we will see what I'm thinking at the halfway point. I am about to go do some morning sessions at the park. I have to run some errands after, but I do have the audio for this one as well. So I'm going to put it in while I go to Trader Joe's and be listening to my little rich people drama as I'm shopping at Trader Joe's. Like that just sounds like the moment that I need today. So I will update you when I'm at the 50% mark. Hello vlog, I am done with my morning sessions. I am about halfway through my errands. We're getting things done today. We're being productive. I went to Target and I thought I was gonna have like a little Target haul to show y'all. Tell me why I found nothing. Good for my wallet, not good for my mental health. <laughs> I 
I wanted a little treat so bad and I got nothing except for, well, I, I guess I got a little treat, but this is really for tonight when my best friend comes over for the debrief. We have a debrief tonight and we needed this. But other than that, I couldn't find anything. And then I also went to the post office, which was boring, boring. So I'm not even getting good B-roll for this vlog, but I do have another update for you. Gosh dang, these books are fast paced. Like I feel like I read The Housemaid yesterday in a day and I am literally speeding through the sequel as well. They're just so, so, so fast paced. I see why people call these like popcorn thrillers because they're so quick and easy to read. So I do see the appeal of Frieda McFadden. Um, still not sold on the ethics of it all, but I am 50% of the way through The Housemaid's Secret. And basically Millie has gotten herself tangled up in this couple's stuff. And now she's trying to extricate herself and it's not working out. Things are getting messy, um, but I'm not super intrigued. Definitely do not care as much about this story as I did about the housemaid, despite the fact that the housemaid was a ripoff and I already knew what was gonna happen. So take with that what you will. We'll see if something pops off, if the story gets a little bit more exciting, but I feel like we should be towards the end with just like the pacing of the story and the way that things are happening. I feel like the story has come to a head or it's about to so i'm like well, what are we gonna do for the rest of the 50 percent of this book not sure but i'll let you know hello vlog i came back to the park did my second round of walking sessions and i also ate lunch i ate a fat quesadilla <laughs> and it was so good and as i'm sitting here quesadilla halfway to my mouth the biggest fucking twist just dropped. Oh my God. Honestly, two twists back to back. I'm only 10% more in than when the last time I updated you. So I'm like at the 60% mark. Bro, when I tell you, I was not prepared for either of those twists. And this is original, Miss Girl, Miss Frida. She's giving us something original. My hair looks insane please ignore that wow she finally gave us something original and you know what the twist is twisting i'm intrigued i'm ready to know what's going on I just got done at Barnes and Noble where I had to ask myself the age old question, is the pretty cashier flirting with me or is it just my delusion? <laughs> and it's always Barnes and Noble cashiers and Trader Joe's cashiers. And I'm about to go to Trader Joe's after I go to the bank. So my delusion's really popping off today. Um, but I wanted to show you really quickly what I got at Barnes & Noble. I went there specifically for My Darkest Prayer by S.A. Cosby. Also love the cover. It's about a funeral home director, like mortician vibes, uh, who's solving a like suspicious death case sounds so good i just know it's gonna have religious trauma commentary and i'm here for it love mr s.a cosby and then this other book it also just came out it's a new thriller called not so perfect strangers by l.s stratton and this is about a black woman who is trying to escape her abusive marriage and as she's on her way making her escape this white woman taps on her window and is like hey take me with you two little pickups um and they both happen to be black authors so shall i do a black author thriller themed vlog anytime i buy two books that are like having any similarities whatsoever i'm like should it be a vlog <laughs> in my kindle unlimited rec video i'm like should i do a kindle unlimited vlog like anything i can theme a vlog after i'm like should i do it but yeah that is what i got at barnes and noble I gotta go to the bank. <laughs> Not the fine ass tatted man at Trader Joe's. <laughs> oh God. And I knew him too. 
I knew him. I manifested this. This is the power of manifestation. I knew this man, like went to elementary and middle school with this person. Didn't recognize him at first. And he was like, Haley, please, please, please. I knew this was gonna happen. Ah, my delusion popping off like, <clears throat> anyway, I'm gonna go home. <laughs> We're gonna unload the groceries and listen to more of Housemaid's Secret on the way. Um, I was doing my AirPods in the grocery store, obviously, but we're not doing that while I'm driving, so nobody get worried, nobody cancel me, it's fine. Hello vlog, I just laid here and finished the Housemaid's Secret, and honestly, that ending was really, really good. <laughs> I cannot tell a lie. It had two really great twists, like big twists, and then that little sinister reveal in the epilogue that I just love so much. So, honestly, if this was a standalone, I'd probably give it four, four and a half stars. But because this is a sequel to a book that was completely, in my opinion, allegedly plagiarized, I'm knocking off a star for that. And then I'm also knocking off half a star because the main character was so fucking annoying for the first, like, third of the book. Um, but other than that, the plot was really, really well constructed. So I'm gonna give it 3.5, maybe a three. I don't know. Cause the first half was really not giving much until the first twist hit. It was really not giving what I needed to give. So maybe I'll actually give it a three. I don't know, three, 3.5. That's where I'm at with that. Next up, I'm gonna be starting Never Lie. This was recommended by a couple of my patrons on my Patreon. They are really liking it over there. So I'm going to start Never Lie. Hopefully it's some original content and I'm not reading it and being reminded of another book. It was definitely refreshing to get that from the sequel uh, to The Housemaid. So hopefully we can continue that and not have another plagiarist moment. Hopefully Frida is out of her plagiarism era. <laughs> I really hope I don't get like a cease and desist. This is all alleged. This is not true. I'm just a girl. Anyway, gonna start that, but I might need to like shower because I feel so gross from just like running around all day. This week is literally kicking my ass. I'm so tired. <sighs> I'll let you know when I start the book. Hello vlog. Oh, I'm so tired. Okay, so last night I had my Patreon watch along watch party, which was so fun. And then my friend came over immediately after and we were gabbing, having a good little gab. And she stayed up with me as I was waiting for the release of the new Lana album, which <laughs> has now sent me into a tizzy. It is so good. It is maybe her best album. I'm obsessed with it. I freaking love it. My favorite songs are Fishtail. <gasps> Fishtail is amazing. Margaret, I want to play at my wedding. Paris, Texas, Peppers, Candy Necklace. Like, I love every single song. I love every single song, but those are like my top of the top of the top. Also, the closing track, Taco Truck, makes a business bitch. Oh my god. So, if you're a Lana girl, let's gab in the comments below. So, that has been overtaking my life, and I have not started uh, the next book for this vlog. Also, now that the weekend has commenced, I am in like a, an extra certification program right now. Um, just, you know, getting more letters at the end of my name. That's the grind. So, literally, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, today, and the next three days, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yeah, and I'm about to be dead. So I'm anticipating a lot of decompression time after 5 p.m. this whole weekend. I think I'm just gonna like read, take a bath, do those kind of self-care things. Um, but today actually, after my class is done, I'm going to see the new Scream movie. So I probably will not even read today, but that's kind of what I have going on. All right, I got to go to class, but I'll see you when I have any kind of reading updates.
hello. <laughs> nice to talk to you. It's Monday at 6 p.m. Y'all, that training was way more intense than I expected. And I know I talk about all the time. I talk about my real job, my day job. Like, oh yeah, going to be a therapist. See you later. <laughs> when I do that in vlogs, but like, it's a very hard job, uh, especially when you do the kind of work that I do, uh, holding space for survivors of sexual trauma and developmental trauma. So that's what my life has been filled with from 8 a.m. to 5 or 6 p.m. for the past four days. But my training just ended, so thank God I have some space to like decompress and also to read because I just could not risk taking in anything slightly triggering even like a domestic thriller over the past few days while I was in that training I really did not know uh how that was gonna affect me but I'm fine do not worry about me I love my job it's just kind of hard sometimes like most people's jobs are we're getting into never lie today actually I'm about three chapters I think two or three chapters into it and basically what's happening is this couple is driving in the snow very treacherous to try to go visit this house and they're looking at maybe buying this house and they get there and they think they're meeting their realtor but she's not there but there's a light on and then creepy things are happening the door's locking they can't drive their car like up the drive like all these these things are happening that is um telling us that there's something going on with this house so that's all i know so far and i'm very very early in we'll see how this unfolds and i'll let you know when i have thoughts about never lie look what i just got in the mail oh my god i'm so excited i have to display her right now look at the other side this is actually printed on the vinyl <sighs> oh oh my god i'm in love i am in love with her Hello vloggy vlog, it is much later at night. I'm actually 70% into Never Lie. This book is really short and really fast paced, much like all of Frida's books, but something about this one is just moving a little bit faster. I'm understanding a little bit more what this book is about. We are alternating chapters now and we are for the bulk of the book, uh, I think for the rest of the book between the therapist who used to live in this creepy old house who is now missing and it is presumed that her boyfriend murdered her and we're going back and forth between those past chapters and then the present as this couple is in the house and I think she's still like alive and in there but we just had a twist, our first twist. And it was not the twist that I was predicting. Although I do think I have a major plot point clocked. I don't know if we're supposed to know this or if it's going to be a twist eventually, but if it's gonna be a twist, it's just really poorly written because I feel like it's so obvious. So I don't know, we'll see how that goes. But for right now, it's just kind of like a meh little popcorn thriller, which I know is like Frida's brand. So I'm not really, mad at it right now it seems original i don't think it's um plagiarism <laughs> like the housemaid allegedly in my opinion those are the thoughts i will probably stay up and read a bit more and then try to get some sleep and give you a full review in the morning hello vlog it is the next morning we woke up to no hot water <laughs> in our apartment that's why i look like this um, because I was not about to take a cold shower. Something about me? I'm going to burn my skin off in the shower. I didn't get a shower this morning. I'm feeling a little uncomfortable. Also, two of my fucking nails popped off. So, good thing I have a nail appointment today. <laughs> Those are the updates. Let me just get the updates out of the way because I know y'all care. Uh, <laughs> I finished Never Lie last night. And honestly, all my predictions were wrong. She caught me completely off guard and it was really entertaining. There was a lack of character development. It really wasn't that deep and it's not gonna be something that I hold on to and remember. But overall, it was a really fun time and a great thriller. If you're looking for something not too deep, like a popcorn thriller, this is perfect for that. And I can't recall any other books that are too similar to this. I mean, it feels like a domestic thriller and it has those like isolated snowy vibes, but that's certainly not anything close to the 
vibes that I was getting from the housemaid. Never Lie was really original and I actually ended up really, really enjoying it. So I'm gonna give it four stars. I actually really highly recommend it. And then I also started The X last night. Let me pull it up so I can show you this horrifying cover. I wanna die looking at this, but I am about 20% into The X. And it's another just like classic domestic thriller. In this book, we are following two people. They're both connected to this man. He is HD. He's referred to as HD in the book, Hot Doctor. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, something about that. I just think it's so fucking funny. Uh, so we're following the, the women in Hot Doctor's life. And one of the women is his ex. And they were dating for so long like years and years and years and years and years, she thought that she was gonna marry this man and he unexpectedly breaks up with her. And she is going downhill. Her life is not working out ever since this breakup happened. She was really counting on this doctor man to not only be the love of her life, but also to finance her life. So things are not going well. And she is projecting that and taking that out on his new girlfriend and we are also following her perspective the new girlfriend she's so cute she owns a little bookstore and they just have this like cutesy little romance so far and I have a feeling that the ex is going to come up and try to sabotage this relationship maybe make an attempt on Cassie the new girlfriend's life uh, but right now it's just like drama pretty standard domestic thriller vibes it's going really really fast as the theme of this video is basically when I actually have time and energy to read, these books go really, really, really fast. These are bingeable for sure. Um, but I'm kind of neutral in the X so far. I don't really have any thoughts uh, at the 20% mark. I have a pretty packed day today. I have clients this morning. Then I have a nail appointment. I have a few errands that I need to run. I have clients tonight. So when I get home from my busy ass day, all I want to do is dive into a no thoughts head empty domestic thriller uh hopefully i'll actually take some b-roll i've been really slacking on the b-roll for this vlog i even made like a cute little um dirty chai with lavender in it this morning i didn't even film b-roll of it like who am i if my brain is too scattered to even film cute coffee b-roll do i even have an identity <laughs> anyway that is my plan for today i will see ya when i have thoughts hello i am done with my first half of my work day and i got my nails done literally these might be my favorite nails i've ever had they're so lana del rey like if that will focus the way that there's a different design on each hand like what and she hand painted those i'm obsessed with my nail tech she's absolutely amazing i you can just see like when somebody gets lost in the art of something it's so beautiful so as i was sitting with her i was reading on my kindle and i got about 75 percent of the way through the x frida books go so fast that's one thing about her um that i am liking and it's just kind of like blah 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 the same thing over and over the ex is stalking the current girlfriend the current girlfriend has some shady stuff going on that she probably wouldn't want the boyfriend to know about and of course the ex is finding out about it and it's giving a domestic thriller it's not super exciting there's no like high stakes things going on but it's entertaining enough to keep me <laughs> from falling asleep as I'm getting my nails done. So that is the purpose that this book is serving right now. I have to go run some errands. I'm going to go to Trader Joe's, go to get some plants and try to find this specific grow light. One of my friends, he works at a plant shop and he's recommending some grow lights for some of my plants because the apartment that we moved into does not get nearly as much light as our last apartment so my plants are kind of struggling so I'm gonna look for that and then hopefully I will make it home in time to get some reading done before I pick up sessions again this evening that's the plan I will get back to you when I have thoughts see you then <music> Hello vlog, I have finished 
my last book of the vlog, The X, and it was a shocking ending. It was a creative ending for sure, but it was a little confusing and just like not satisfying, if that makes sense. Like, it just didn't make the most sense to me. Like, I don't think it was the best choice she could have made to end the book on. So I'm probably going to give this one a three star. It wasn't bad. Like, it was definitely entertaining and shocking, but I'm probably going to forget about it. And there's definitely better thrillers out there. So ending on a three star. I will probably do a little outro in the morning. So see you then. Good morning vlog. It is the next day. And I just want to wrap up my thoughts on this vlog. Overall, I'm very conflicted of what I feel about Frida McFadden, especially her books that feel really, really close to other popular books. It just feels like she's leeching off ideas that were not hers, allegedly, in my opinion. So I had to give The Housemaid one star because when you attack The Last Mrs. Perry, my favorite book possibly ever my favorite domestic thriller ever that's where we're gonna have an issue but overall the ex and the housemaid secret were just like average thrillers they definitely didn't do anything crazy that I've never seen before but they were an entertaining time aside from a few annoying elements so normal three-star books uh, I actually really would recommend Never Lie. It was really, really good, really short, really fast paced, just a good popcorn thriller. I don't know, maybe I would return to Freedom McFadden for something like that, but it's kind of just giving Kirsten Modlin where it's a trend and she'll blow up for a little bit and then I'll kind of forget about her and I'd much rather read the stuff that I have on my shelves. Also, not to be this way, but I would much rather read a beautiful book. I know that that's like, whatever, read indie authors, read ebooks, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also like, when I have this beautiful, gorgeous book with deckled edges and I, don't you want to pick up this rather than like, You've seen the covers that I featured in this vlog. So that is my overall opinion on Frida McFadden. I'm really glad I did this taste test because I think it opened up a lot of conversations. I can't wait to talk about it with y'all in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do not forget to go down below and check out Magic Mind. Get some money off and boost your focus and concentration during your workday without caffeine. Go ahead and like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!